Oh, there we go, I'm on. Welcome to Covering Water, a series showcasing the untold, captivating stories of the people changing the world of fishing. Today, we're headed to Boston, Massachusetts with Northeast legend Roy Leva, a multiple world record holder proving it's possible to live out one's childhood dreams. <laughs> I'm your host, Natalie Dillon. So when you're, you know, a 10-year-old kid or whatever, running around here with fishing poles, did, did you stand out? Were people like, What's, why is that guy fishing? Or was that just yeah. part of the culture here? You know what? I, I stood out for, for two things. I did a lot of martial arts and boxing as a kid. So I wore Chinese suits all the time. Mm. So I, I think I was a little odd, mm -hmm. you know, to people. But unique. Unique. And then in the sense, I think I think you love something like for me. Mm -hmm. I think people see people. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, see, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just becomes just normal. As a kid growing up in basically an all-white fishing community, right? I strive to be hurt. So I'd be like, you know, I caught this many bass. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that kind of Free cell phone. fueled me, right? Fueled me to to kind of try to figure out a way to be like, look, like I really did this, you know? I grew up uh, Mission Hill, Roxbury. Um, from there we moved to Mission Park and then High Park, which we are at now. My family is from Cuba. I'm Cuban American. I was the only one born here. My mom, my dad, my brother, and two sisters came in 1971. I wanna say fishing for me was one, a catalyst to get me out of the city and, and, and its perils, right? You find a lot of things in the city that aren't great, but there's a lot of things that are great. And fishing was one of those things that you could actually do because there was there's a lot of water in this city. And it might be murky, it might be muddy, it might not smell the greatest, but it's got fish. There was a couple moments in my life that really changed my perspective of fishing as a whole, where it just became something vast, like it was no longer the city. Um, and one of those was probably the first trout I had ever caught because I caught it out of Jamaica Pond uh, where we fished and um, I didn't expect it. I, at that age, I didn't know there was, there was trout there. And I had only seen that in magazines and, and TV shows. So at that point, it was like, wow, like, you know, what else is there out there? You know, every kid dreams to go places. And when you're stuck in a city, those places are anywhere there's green or color or something that's just not normal and nobody I knew fished. So having that was just, it was an escape. This reminds me a lot of the Minneapolis City Lakes that you just sneakily will catch just big fish. Everyone's like, whoa, like people running by. There's big fish here, I promise. Do you want to move or? Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to say the first fish I ever caught was a flounder. When I got about, about eight years old, um, my godfather, um, who lives on the Cape got heavily into freshwater fishing and throwing artificials. And that's kind of where bass came into the scene. And I want to say until about the age 16, I was, I was you know, saltwater and slash largemouth bass guy. The first time I actually met him, it was really impersonal. It was just happened to be on the Cape Cod Canal fishing with some of my friends. He was out there fishing with some of his friends and I had actually known one of them, so said hello in passing. And I think after that, he inquired, like, oh, who's that? He actually came up to go shad fishing with me for our first actual date, which turned into a week-long date. Um, and kind of the rest is history. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better mom, mother and father. I think I cook more like my mom, mm -hmm. but my dad was, I mean, that was a chef. He was, that's what he did for a living. Freshwater wise, this is like where I learned to fish. What do I gotta do to catch a bass? They are lock jawed right now. All right, we gotta move. Okay. Here we go. Oh, you on? Yep. Nice. Feels like a decent fish. Don't jump. <gasps> oh yeah, he's a decent fish. That's good. This is a good fish. Oh my gosh, I just got so excited. Welcome back to the city. 
Hello, hello. Our first Boston City oh, bass. Oh, I'm, I'm excited right now. That is a good fish. <gasps> I'm excited right now. You want me to grab him? Grab him. Oh I'm so God. excited oh right now. Oh my God. Ah. <laughs> this is a <laughs> Dude. Oh my God, come hold your fish. Dude. This is a tank. Is that one of the bigger fish you've got here? It's, it's a good decent size, yeah. This is why you come to Boston. This is why you come my to Boston. My goodness. Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm pumped for you. I'm pumped for me. I mean, that's over five pounds. Yeah, she's beautiful. Dude, should we let her go? Yeah. Dude, this is so, so cool. Ready to go. Healthy, healthy girl, look at her go. Yes. That's how it's done. There's just so much out there and so much to catch and it just, it's awesome. It just fuels me. For me, catching a new species is like, I just won the Super Bowl, right? It's like so exciting, so exhilarating. Like it just, it's this uncontrollable feeling that you just can't control. It's just awesome. I have faith. You have faith? Yep. Oh, did I get him? I lost him. <laughs> oh man! Trying every spot we can, I guess. Yeah. This is gonna be tricky. Uh oh, this is gonna be real tricky. Oh, oh I'm oh, on! I'm on! Yes! Oh my gosh! Okay. Whoa. Just keep reeling. Should I bring him all the way in over here? Yeah. This is city fishing at its finest. <gasps> Just keep reeling. He's on. Oh my God, shoot! No. Shoot! Dang. Keeps us hungry. All right, you're up, partner. So how often are you striper fishing these days? Not as much as I'd yeah. like to. Um, I'm on the other side of the state. Yeah. So, I mean, we do have them in the Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. So I do target them, but not, 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 not like I used to. They're like an essential part of the culture out here. Yeah, they are. Not. Yeah. I mean, I don't eat fish. Yeah. So my folks don't live here anymore. Yeah. So I got nobody to give fish to. So. Yeah. So they all yeah. go back. Let them go and let them grow. That's it. When did you first get excited about them? Uh, my whole entire life, ever since I was a little kid. So, yeah. like growing up, I was too young when they were around, like really strong, mm -hmm. to get out and fish mm -hmm. with uh, with my my dad and, and my godfather, who used to fish for them a lot. It wasn't until '87 or '88 that was mm -hmm. they they started to like rebound, yeah. and I I caught my first, and then from there on, it's just yeah. like instant love, like. Forget, forget large mob, <laughs> yeah, yeah. forget trout, forget carp, forget everything. Yeah. It's just striped bass. That yeah, was cool. it. Yeah. So. What is your total? How many species have you caught? I'm at, right, right now, I'm at 512. Okay. It, it's more. Yeah. I mean, world records. I've had them for koi, for salmon, for crappie, for pickerel, and I'm probably missing a couple more. But they're all like, whether it's all tackle or line class world records. Most of them probably aren't standing anymore. It's been a long time since I've chased records. Before all that, you know, I caught a koi out of Jamaica Pond, Boston, which I brought home to put in a koi pond and uh, ended up posting some photos. And somebody was like, that's, that like shatters the world record. That was kind of like the beginning, you know? So the chasing records evolved kind of, you know, people pay attention to big fish, right? So if you, if you have any kind of social media or, or platform that you're working on, uh, for me at the time was a website, offthehookfishing.com. And it just seemed like that's how people would engage you was if you could catch big fish, then you know you stood somewhere. Wait, is this your first time in Boston? Me? Yeah. It is. Yeah, I know, isn't that crazy? 
It's gonna be like your first Boston striper. Yeah, it'll be my first Boston fish. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, get him. Come on. No. There, come on, come on. Oh yeah. He just, he didn't like blow up on it very hard. He just, just, yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Um, maybe assist just a wee, oh my gosh. Maybe just, yeah. Do they usually uh, come in schools? It's a pretty good one. I'm gonna just let him take. Wow, he woke up. They are super sporty. Nice, look how beautiful. Yeah, maybe um, assist here. Do we want a net or just a... Uh... Okay. Come here, buddy. Oh my, look how beautiful. These have great color. I'm gonna flip them your way. I think he's hooked pretty good. Yeah? That's a good size too, isn't it? Dude! That is a good size one. Uh, these are beautiful fish. That was so sporty too. You guys check out where this is hooked. Oh yeah. Right in the corner of the mouth. Oh my gosh. Sweet. Yeah, let me get a good hold on them. Dude, nice landing. Beautiful. Sweet. It's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Nice. I mean, he was a much more accomplished fisherman, getting state records and world records. I'm more just a fishing guy, like, you know, like, I, I sort of have a similar story to Roy in that I lived in a uh, housing project, tough place to grow up, and I used to escape getting away from the projects and getting in trouble by just going down and, and fishing at the local ponds. I think he likes to show people that it is possible to get out of that loophole of being in the big city and you can follow your dreams and it doesn't matter where you're from. And being from the city, you always see people that make it always come back. Like from Mission Hill, you got new addition. And they made it and they would come back and they'd give it to the community. So you always have that ingrained in the back of your head where, you know what, if I ever make it in life, I'm gonna come back and do something for my city. And John, actually from the fishing academy was the one who I was working at a hair salon and he walks in and and uh, I walked in and said are you Roy Leva because someone had given me his name and said if you're gonna do this program you need to get with this guy he's, he's the city rat you know and I think Roy thought I was there for another reason <laughs> to, to maybe have a fist fight <laughs> he's like hey he's like I've got this thing going on and I'm looking for somebody to help me start it so the Fishing Academy, uh, our mission is to take kids off the streets and into the outdoors, taking over 8,000 kids, 17th year, and um, Roy was a huge part of our success. It's to, not just to create kids that like fishing and have fun and respect, it's to get people to become better people overall, you know, and achieve. Kids gravitated to him, you know, I mean, they, 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 they were like sponges, they wanted like they wanted to take in everything. One of the things that I usually tell parents or anyone wanting to get into the sport or get their kids into the sport is you got to do it gradually, right? You got to take your kids fishing so that they catch fish, especially if they're younger. You have to pique their interest with them. And if they want to stop and throw rocks, let them throw rocks. Um, another great way is there's a lot of programs out there, just like the Fishing Academy. And those programs are usually free or have some kind of funding. Yeah, we oh, might want to. Here we go, I'm on. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Should I uh, cast over there? Yeah, or help just you? Keep, okay. Keep fishing. Oh, dude. How does it feel? Feels good. Does it? Yeah. You this have the one, top uh, water on, or you got. No, I was, I was uh, throwing a shad. Looks like you've been here before. There he is. Yeah? Hey, it's not bad. A little bit smaller than yours. Nice. But he's pretty. <laughs> Way pretty. I'll give you that. So that's a good one. I get very excited about catching these fish, especially coming back to to Beantown. <laughs> yeah. Nobody calls it Beantown, Boston. <laughs> and um, 
welcome back to the city, right? Yeah, it's your welcoming party. Makes me miss this place a lot. No, you don't go. Since his father passed away, he's definitely been on the water, maybe even more so than he was before. I mean, I think he definitely feels a connection with him when he's out there. So my dad um, was very proud of me. I got to spend time, he was in hospice for, for almost a year um, before he passed. You know, he, he was able to see um, a film about me, some awards that I got during that time, and all of them I dedicated, everything I, that I did that year I dedicated to him. And uh, I mean, everything since I dedicated to him. I dedicate me being here right now. So I think he was very, very proud of me. I can't remember what it was, but I caught something, and it was a potential world record. And I like stopped fishing to get this fish weighed in, measured, and seen by a biologist. Like the fishing was so hot and it was so good. It's like if I had stayed, like maybe I would have caught a bigger one than this, or I would have caught five or six like this. And that's when it kind of it started to to kind of nip me, and then it, it just didn't do it for me anymore. You know, I just want to fish. Like that's that's my love, man. Like it, it's it's. It's my patch, who I am. Like, if I can fish every day and all I've got is a little creek and two inch fish, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go chase some two inch fish. Cause I don't care. Cause at the end of the day, it's that same feeling. You know what I mean? <laughs> no way, that's a bass. Oh my God. That's so awesome. This is definitely the smallest bass I have ever caught. That takes skill. <laughs> he can catch a fish that has a hook like that you can't even see. And he's gonna be more excited about that than he's going to be about catching some record-breaking fish. I think what makes him such a good angler is just his passion and his drive. Um, he's not out there trying to do it for anybody else. It's completely for him. He's always willing to give back to the sport, so he's not a selfish sort of person. I think that makes a lot of difference in how he's viewed in the fishing community. There we go. Oh. My first bluegill of the year. These are such pretty fish. Ooh. Oh. Look at the life I live. Like, I mean, I fish, I eat well, I have a great time, always a smile on my face, no regrets. I mean, it's just, it's, it's impacted my life incredibly. I think my life has been, you know, from day one, having a wonderful family to bring me up no matter where we were. It's all been opportunities. But everyone's got chances, everyone's got opportunities. And it might not just be fishing, like everyone's good at something. Like we all have gifts and you have to find that gift, you know? So what are we making today? Uh, ropa vieja. Ropa vieja. Yeah, which <laughs> translates to old it's clothes. Yeah. Probably the most synonymous dish with all of Cuban fishing, correct? Yeah, it's probably one or of, up cooking. there. Or Cuban cooking. Yeah, it's, it's up there. How much is food part of your life? Uh, it's a huge part of my life. Is that from your family or is it from you? I think it comes from both. I mean, I just, I love food, but my mom's a great cook. My dad was a chef, so. Mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest thing that my story would probably say is that you can, you can do what you love and be successful and somewhat make a living out of it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. You've been all over. You've caught more species than probably anybody could dream of. Do you still get excited about these type of moments? Every day. Every time. Never, never fails. Mm -hmm. They're all different. Like everything's different or sometimes I'm, you know, somebody different mm -hmm. standing where you're standing right now. Or mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll set up something like this and people drive up and talk to me and, you know, hey, you want some? I got mm -hmm. extra, you know? So it's cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things that just, I don't know, just never gets old, you know? A lot of times, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, how'd, how'd you make it? How'd you get sponsored? And my, my answer is always like, be you. We are all different. Nobody's, nobody's gonna be Natalie, nobody's gonna be Roy, right? And we all have our story to tell. And we might have stories that kind of sound the same, 
but somewhere it's unique. It's about enjoying it and being able to to pass it on and, and, and let people enjoy it as well. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode of Covering Water. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have someone that you think would be good on a future episode, let us know in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more. See you guys.